Welcome to Journey Church Online. We're so glad that you're watching today. I hope you'll check out our website, journeyconnection.com, so you can get to know more about our community of faith. We'd love to partner with you on your spiritual journey. But before you do that, don't walk away. It's time to get that awesome Journey Band in here.
asking me why. Why do the same thing every year? Why not move on? But I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Johnny? Present. I'm comfortable. I know the routine. And I don't want to brag, but I'm pretty popular around here. I do really well in sports. I'm just very successful yes. here. Why would I go and mess that up by graduating? A B. But don't. I mean, in the first grade, I may not know all the answers. D. D. Dog. E. The hours are longer. I hear they don't even have nap time. I mean, I just don't see the upside. Then first grade leads to second grade, second to third. It's really good. Then you're in high school reading boring books with no pictures. Three, four, five. But he was still, still hungry. hungry. Next thing you know, people expect you to get a job and give up summer vacation. <laughs> no, sir. I think I found my niche. Thank you very much. Home sweet kindergarten. Besides, I mean, 
What if I failed first grade? How humiliating would that be? No, just don't think I could handle that kind of embarrassment. And sometimes letter Y to... That was not a good choice. Very disappointed. Hey everybody, we're in a series called Spiritual Checkup. When you first go to a doctor's office for a checkup, often you'll be asked to give information about your health history. It's important to give an accurate health history because it gives some indication to the physician of how physically healthy you may be and helps the doctor to diagnose what health challenges you may have that need correcting. Now, how truthful do you think people are in giving their health history to their doctor? Do you think people ever lie about their health? Do you think that they lie 10% of the time in giving their health history, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. In an article published by Brigham Young University Communications, research showed that 60 to 90% of patients lie to their healthcare providers for a variety of reasons, from avoiding embarrassment to approval seeking and the result can be devastating. Now, do you think women or men are more likely to lie about their health? The researchers found that women were more likely to lie initially, but they would then come clean if questioned further. However, men were more likely to lie once you asked them if they were lying. In other words, if men lied at the beginning, they would lie again later. Now, I'd like to think that all of the folks connected with Journey Church always tell the truth, not only about our physical health, but also our spiritual health as well, because when we fail to do so, the result can be devastating. We live in a time when people struggle to differentiate between fact and fiction between accurate information and false information, between what's true and what's not. This can take place in the economic realm, in the political realm, and in the spiritual realm. When it comes to spiritual truth, there are also people who knowingly or unknowingly misinform. Maybe they themselves got erroneous information in the first place and don't realize any better. Or maybe they're making things up because they don't want to face the truth, but either way, they've got it wrong. My goal for our journey community of faith is for us to get it right. So let's set the record straight. Number one. Spiritual health and growth is not optional for Jesus followers. It's expected. Some believers in Christ think that when it comes to their spiritual development, it's a take it or leave it kind of thing. They have the attitude, if I want to stay spiritually stagnant for the rest of my life, that's my decision. If I want to take the next step in my spiritual growth, that's my call. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. My spiritual development is no one else's business. Like in the video, if I want to stay stuck in a kindergarten-like faith, that's my choice. On the human side of the equation, that may be true. No one can force us to grow spiritually. It always has to be our choice. But when it comes to God's side of the equation, that view is absolutely false. From God's point of view, there's something majorly wrong with a Christian who is not seeking to grow deeper in their faith. Spiritual stagnation has never been God's intention. God doesn't want us to remain spiritual infants. The Apostle Paul writes, My friends, 
you are acting like the people of this world. I could not speak to you as spiritual people. You are like babies as far as your faith in Christ is concerned. Paul, in effect, says, you are like selfish babies spiritually. Now, do you think people in the Corinthian church would have thought of themselves that way? Do you think any of us today think of ourselves as selfish babies spiritually? Because our lives are mostly about us, 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 and what we want. God's intention is not for us to stay selfishly immature. That's why God has given to all believers the Holy Spirit who constantly seeks to transform us inwardly. The Holy Spirit whispers to us, take a step of faith. Don't stay stuck. Move forward. Learn more. Develop. Become more and more like Jesus. The difficulty is, a lot of us may not be listening. Why do you think that is? Is it because we think that if we really started to grow spiritually, it would take some of the joy and meaning out of our lives? That's not true. The Bible says, God is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. Growing to become more like Jesus makes your life better. It doesn't rob you of something that's good for you. It empowers you to live life to the fullest. Don't be confused about what God's agenda is for your life once you become a Christ follower. God wants you to experience life to the max. And to do that, you should be increasing in faith and faithfulness. You should be continually becoming a more mature, knowledgeable, loving, fired up follower of Jesus. Some people think, but the whole Christian life stuff is so boring. False, not true, wrong. Following Jesus is meant to be a radical, all-out adventure. If it seems boring, it's because we are playing it safe. That's not something Jesus did. He put it on the line every day. He didn't get caught up in always wanting to be comfortable and to have everyone like him. He had a deep passion for life and living God's way. We're the ones missing out if we fail to embrace that because when we live all out for God, we become a part of God's plan to redeem the world, the world. Number two. We're to become active participants in God's rescue effort to save people from the pain of loneliness and lostness and lovelessness. God wants to involve us in the most exciting enterprise on the face of the earth. God wants to entrust us with life-transforming kingdom responsibilities. We just don't recognize that or get to share in the joy of that when we remain self-centered spiritual babies who aren't yet ready to do something life-altering. If we want to get in on the action, if we want to share in God's redemptive purposes to literally change the world, we need to decide it's time for us to grow up spiritually and then to actually take steps for that to become a reality. Number three, spiritual growth is not accomplished by all Christ followers in the same way. There simply is not a multi-year spiritual development course that each of us can enroll in and then graduate all mature and never have to worry about learning or growing anymore in life. Someone might say to you, if you just read these 10 books, take these five classes, and practice these three spiritual disciplines, then you'll have it. You'll become all God wants you to be. It doesn't work that way. Each one of us is unique. 
We each are created differently than everyone else in the universe. And so we each have our own individual spiritual path to follow of the unique talents and abilities that people have. The Apostle Paul wrote, All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. God intentionally wired people differently. We have different abilities, different personality styles. We have different ways of learning and connecting in relationships. We're at different stages of our lives. We have different schedules and stresses. There was a time in my life, and it still sneaks in every once in a while, when I thought other people surely get God better than I do. Lots of times, I don't feel very holy. I don't have a sense of what God's doing. I look at other people who seem to be way more Jesus-like than me, and I think, surely, they know some secret to grow spiritually that I don't. But I've realized, number four, there's no one single method for spiritual growth that's optimal for all people everywhere. I came to grasp this when I did studies in cognitive psychology and neuroscience. The ways God has created us to think impacts our spirituality. I even have a book entitled, Who We Are is How We Pray, Matching Personality and Spirituality. So if today you're feeling inadequate or guilty about how you've been or haven't been progressing in your faith, I want to encourage you to embrace spiritual development practices that are right for you, that might help you connect with God in a deeper way. Number five, there are multiple spiritual practices we may embrace to deepen in faith. Here are some. Pray. Prayer is just talking with God. It doesn't require a bunch of these and those. Just open yourself up to God. Read. Listen to the Bible. You may interact with multiple Bible versions by using the YouVersion or Bible Gateway app. Read. Listen to Christian books. If you're not sure where to start with this, check out a list on our church website, journeyconnection.com. Sing. Listen to worship music. To sing and listen to a lot of great worship songs, check out our Journey Band singing on our Journey Church Roanoke YouTube channel. Keep a spiritual journal. On an ongoing basis, write down your reflections on what you're learning about God, about yourself, about your faith. Then every so often, go back and read over it to discover how you're maturing spiritually. It's a great way to do a spiritual checkup. Engage in acts of service to get to know Jesus better. Because when we serve people in need, we're serving Christ. We all ought to be actively serving God in some way. But if we really want to connect with God in a deeper way through service, instead of four or five hours serving Christ each week, we might serve for 10 hours or more per week. The Apostle Paul writes, Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. God Himself willing and working at what will give Him the most pleasure. I want to be up front. If we just engage in spiritual activities for us to experience God's love, but we don't engage in actions of service to share that love with others, we're showing we're still spiritual babies. Number six, spiritual growth is not easy. It doesn't happen effortlessly. Spiritual growth requires something of us. 
It takes an act of the will and a disciplining of the Spirit. If you want to develop to be more Christ-like, you're not just going to be fighting against selfishness, against past failures and present bad habits. You're going to be fighting against Satan himself. The Apostle Paul writes, We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. When we try to grow spiritually, we're in a battle with Satan. He tries to get us to take the easy way out instead of doing what's right. Have you ever felt like Satan was whispering something in your ear? You knew it was wrong. You may have even argued with yourself, but you finally gave in. Temptation can be subtle or it can be blatant. But the reality is we're all tempted to abandon the way of Jesus. And unless we're continually growing in spiritual maturity, we're much more likely to give in. Number seven, spiritual growth requires courage. Spiritual growth requires change. If we want to just be nominal Christians, if we just want to go through the motions religiously, not much is required of us. But if we really want to make a difference for Christ, and if we really want Christ to make a difference in us, it's going to mean challenging the status quo of our lives. It's going to mean choosing to stand apart from our friends when they're doing things that are outside God's will. It's going to mean having to deal with conflict in our families when we want to live in a more Christ-like way and they don't. If we only want a superficial, surface-level faith, not much will be required of us. But if we truly want to live for Jesus, it's going to involve some significant changes. We're going to have to rethink some long-held values and beliefs. We're going to have to let go of some long-established patterns of behaviors and habits of relating. Someone says to you, hey, you want to go out and get high with us, don't you? What are you going to say? Are you going to have the courage to respond? My days of drunkenness and drugging are over. I want a better life than that. I know I've got a long ways to go, but I'm trying to grow to be more like Christ because deep down, I know that's life at its very best. Or someone says to you, hey, you're not going to hang around with that person, are you? Why would you want to be with them? They're losers. They're a joke. Are you going to give in to peer pressure and adopt that kind of judgmental, negative, hurtful, soul-destroying attitude? Or are you going to have the courage of faith to stand up and say, Hey, I know they're not perfect, but neither am I. And for that matter, neither are you. I'm not going to ridicule people just because they're different from me. The truth is, they're closer to living the Jesus way than either of us is. You want to know what the biggest barrier to spiritual growth is? It's pride. It's thinking that we're better than we really are and that we don't need to change. Please get this. Number eight, spiritual growth is possible. Some people believe that there's no hope for them, that they can never change, that their lives can never be different. Yes, they can. The idea that you're locked into always being the way you've always been is a disinformation campaign by Satan himself. We may have failed and fallen, but God does not give up on us. God binds up our wounds when we become broken. 
God upholds us when we experience heartache. God is our ally in helping us grow spiritually even in the midst of the challenges of life. We're not alone even in the times when we mistakenly believe we are. The Apostle Paul encourages us with these words. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. God is at work in your life, even when you don't realize it. So, what next step will you take in your journey of faith with God? It it, it may just be a small step, but it will be a beginning. And you may be surprised at what God might do. So, will you try? Will you? Let's pray. God, just to know that you don't give up on us can encourage us and strengthen us, challenge and motivate us. Because the reality is at times all of us can be spiritual babies, self-centered, self-focused, selfish. We want what we want and we chase after the distractions of the world. But it's those distractions that keep us from drawing closer to you, God. It's those distractions that keep us from experiencing greater spiritual maturity, depth, and meaning in life. And if we're honest, some of us would admit we're a little afraid of going deeper because we'd have to deal with some of the junk in our lives. But God, it's only when we do that and we let go of it that we can find the freedom that you desire for us, that you can rescue us from our selfishness, that you can help us to discover life at its very best. So God, I, I pray for all of us that we might take at least some beginning steps on the journey of faith to become more spiritually mature, to be real with ourselves and with you, And to recognize that the status quo is not where we want to stay. We want to move forward in faith. God, strengthen us and empower us to do that. We pray this in Jesus. Amen.
Thank you so very much for worshiping with our Journey Church online congregation today. We hope you have found it meaningful. In Journey, we want to help people to, to move forward on the journey of faith. And if we may do that with you, please let us know. Go to journeyconnection.com and fill out the eConnect card. Let us know how we might serve you, might minister with you. It may be that you want to take the step of committing your life to Jesus. Put that on your connection card. It may be that you want to rededicate yourself to start living more the Jesus way. Maybe you're at the place where you realize that you don't want to be so selfish anymore. and You want to serve in some way and you want to make a real difference. Put that in your Connect card. We'll find a way to help you make a difference in people's lives by sharing the love of Jesus. If you're a follower of Christ, something you will want to do will be to give financially because it shows that you are a Christ follower. You want to be generous in giving to support the life-changing ministries of Journey Church and of our mission partners. You can give through our website again, journeyconnection.com. When you give, realize it not only blesses children and youth and families and young adults and people who are older and people who are hurting and hopeless, it allows us to minister in our community. And one of our ministry partners is called the Society of St. Andrew. When you give to us, a portion that goes to them, and they collect food, glean food through um, going out in fields to collect um, produce that would go bad otherwise, and then they take it to food banks to feed hungry people. If you give financially, you enable us to be a part of that. And beyond that, if you want to volunteer with Society of St. Andrew in gleaning, picking up food, we're going to be doing that in September. Put that on your eConnect card. We'd be delighted to let you know how you can do that. We thank you for worshiping with us today. And as we go through this series, Spiritual Checkup, I hope you'll be honest with yourself. What's the thing you need to do next to become all that God wants you to be? God bless you. My